let's spice up this video. Today I'm giving you some spicy tips to spice up your edit. If you're ready, let's jump on in. The first tip is to use animation. Now animation is a super broad term, but it can be anything from simple animations like shapes animating on screen or some cool text animations, which are all in my toolkit by the way. But it can even go to even more complex animations that you see in Disney and Pixar animated films. The only real limitation is your imagination or your knowledge, I suppose. For today's example, I'm using Runway Gen 1's AI to generate more complex complex animations for me. In a most recent example for Shoba Music, I edited this TikTok where she was dancing and then she transformed into these Disney princesses. And I chose to do this because she actually filmed this at Disneyland, but you couldn't actually see that she was at Disneyland. So by adding in these animations, it just helped make it more dynamic. So set in and out points around the part that you want to export from your video and then export it as an mp4 and upload it to Runway. I recommend exporting it in the H.264 format in match source adaptive high bitrate and then export. So to animate with Runway Gen 1, you can give a style reference image, preset, or text prompt. Let's try in the style of Cinderella from Disney. And we can increase the style strength, which controls how much to transform the original image based on the style reference. So now we have a variety of different styles to choose from and once we find one we like, we can click generate. This will then take the movements of Shoba and apply those animation styles to her. So obviously I tested this out a bunch until I got the result that I wanted for the final edit. And I repeated this for every single Disney princess that we included in her TikTok. You can also do a popular trend right now called world jumping, where you snap and you can use runway to transform your world. And I actually made one, here it is. After each edit, a bite of spice. Speeding up or slowing down your videos seems like the oldest trick in the book, but using it creatively can separate amateur edits from the fabulous ones. I mean, you definitely don't want your videos looking like this. Here I have footage of someone walking through the forest. It's kind of meh. What if I want the footage to speed up in the beginning or the end? Let's just cut to separate the parts I want to have at different times. And since the stock footage is already slow-mo, I will select the beginning and the end portion and press Control R or Command R if you're on a Mac. And this will bring up the clip speed duration. Speed it up to around 400% and this is the result. It's more interesting now, but when the speed changes, it's abrupt. This is where time remapping comes into play. With time remapping, I was able to use the pen tool to create keyframes on where I want the speed to change and even expand the keyframe point to have the speed change more gradually. And one thing you can't forget when you're changing speed is frames per second. The reason you might see a lot of slow-mo shots looking choppy is because some editors don't know how important the video's FPS is. If you have a 25 FPS video and a 25 FPS timeline and you try to slow it down by 50%, the video will just become 12.5 FPS and it's just going to look choppy. The best way to go about this is if you plan on using a slow-mo shot, shoot it in a higher frame rate. That way your footage has more frames to work with. But in some cases you're stuck with 25 to 30 frames per second and you still gotta slow it down. Premiere can help you out. You can press Control R or Command R to go to the clip speed and duration window. And here you can change the time interpolation to optical flow. And basically this just predicts and add-ins new frames that didn't exist before. When we play it back, it should look less choppy. But if you look at the results, it's not the most ideal. Nothing beats having the right frame rate for the job. These edits are just getting spicier and spicier. So you've probably heard how important music is to your video a million times by now. So let's just skip over that and let's jump straight into some fun effects that you can apply to your music and your sound effects to make it more spicy. Today we'll be adding sound 
to some mountain climbing stock footage. In order to convey the emotion of the scene, we need to find music that strengthens the storytelling. And I know exactly where to find this. Music Bed. Music Bed is the sponsor of today's video and they make finding music super easy. Let's license and download Never Let Go Instrumental by Tyler Brown Williams. So I've imported all the stock footage, music, and sound effects into Premiere Pro. I made a quick edit. And I'm trying to imagine this as an intro to a travel vlog. Here I have a part where the music cuts out and the nature ambience comes in. I think I can make this a little bit more interesting and engaging. Maybe instead of just fading out the music, I could use the pitch shifter effect that is built into Premiere to make the music pitch down at the end, a little bit like slowing down a vinyl. Now we have a cool pitch down effect that goes into a cool nature break. We could even copy this part and put it where the music comes back in and instead of pitching it down, we can pitch it up into the song again. The reason I chose to not use the pitch shifter at the beginning of where the song kicks back in is because I want to keep the big drum buildup into the drop. If I pitch up that part, it would mess up the sound. The next effect I want to show you is EQ. I'll be using the parametric equalizer effect. Using this, you'll be able to manipulate any part of the sound's frequency. It's a little hard to explain, so let me just show you. In this part of the song where the drone flies away from the people climbing, I think it would be cool if the music here sounds like it's coming from the people's speaker. And as the drone pulls back, the sound should feel like it's further out. When we play it back, it feels like the sound is coming from inside of the speaker. But as it goes back out to the good quality in time with the cut, it just feels so satisfying. Let me show you another use case of EQ real quick. If I jump into my little car sequence here, I added the song Baby You Got It by Clarence Murray, also from Musicbed. It's very uplifting, but when it cuts to the guy acting stressed in the car, it kind of contradicts itself. What if I used EQ to make it sound like the music was coming from inside of the car? And to glue this all together, I will add in some car driving sound effects. Baby, you got it. Even with the song singing, Baby You Got It, with this quick effect, the vibe of the video makes it feel like he doesn't got it. So let's move over to the end of the sequence here. And this is where we run into the classic problem, where you want the music to end here, but at this moment, it doesn't have the natural ending. There are definitely many different ways you can tackle this issue, like using the remix music effect, but my favorite is using the reverb effect. Now, normally reverb can make a sound sound distant, but in this case, it can also help you end the song. If I cut out the end part of the song and add the reverb effect to it, it will just reverb and then stop abruptly where the audio cuts off. But we want the reverb to linger on into the horizon. The way to do this is to add reverb as an effect on the whole audio layer. For example, I can add it to audio track four. With this new setup, whatever we put on audio track four, it'll have reverb on it. Let's take the tiny part from the end of the song and plop it down here. And when we play, the song echoes out into the horizon like we want it. Music Bed's music is already so awesome to edit to because the music is so lit and just adding the pitch shift effect or the EQ or the reverb just makes it even more engaging or should I say spicier. I know when I use Music Bed and these effects, my videos are very successful and engaging and I know your audience will too. Music Bed has a curated roster of over 400,000 artists that you won't find anywhere else. I put together a playlist of mine and my editing teams of our favorite music to edit to from Musicbed just down below. You can sign up for a free plan to browse as many music tracks as you like and you can use code PremierGal to get one month free when you sign up for an annual subscription. Now let's go into some more sound effects. I have a little title pop here at the end that I think needs some good old sound effects. I have a reverby ding sound effect here that I think is perfect for this. So let's add the sound effects three times for the three times the text pops in. 
You can hear it sounds too repetitive. Now, obviously, I could go find another dingy sound effect to use to get rid of the repetition, but if you just have one sound effect, one thing that you can do is create a pitch shift effect to create more variety. You can use the same pitch shifter effect that I mentioned earlier, but here's another way of doing it. You can click on the sound effects and press Control R or Command R to bring up the speed and duration. And here you can just adjust each sound effect to have a different speed. And the changes don't have to be drastic. By changing the speed, we are able to change the pitch enough so all the sound effects sounds a little bit different. Now let's also cut the tail of each sound effect and let's put it on the layer with our reverb effects. Now all the ding effects sound more distant to match our mountain footage because the dings now echo into the mountains. That was spicy. The scale parameter in Premiere Pro is way more powerful than you think. Let me show you a few things that you can do to spice up your edit just using the scale. For this tip, I'll be using an example from my latest video on generative AI. And in that video, I interviewed Unmesh from Pixin Perfect on his thoughts. Now in this interview, I did add some B-roll to make it a little bit more spicy. But there are a few other things that you can do to make a talking head interview a little bit more interesting. Things that were impossible to do are now possible. Things that used to take hours maybe and maybe years of training can now be done in seconds. First, you can cut out all the pauses to make long talking parts tighter. The pace of the interview now is tighter, but it did introduce several jump cuts that could feel a little annoying. So here are some zoom tricks you can use to fix it. For longer talking segments, a simple zoom on the next cut can make it feel like a different shot. You can even change the position. Possible to do are now possible. Things that use. You can also quickly zoom into objects or people when something is said to give it even more impact. Years of training can now be done. But you don't want to overdo this because sometimes it can have a dizzying effect on your audience who is watching. And thirdly, you can slowly zoom in and out on a static shot to make it more interesting. For example, here I have footage of someone climbing down a mountain. If I go to a controls and create a zoom in slowly, it would give a more calming vibe, right? But if I scale it up more and adjust the timing to bring them together to be more quick, the shot now has more energy, so we can definitely change the vibe. Now let's check out the short clip with Pixim Perfect with all of the zooms applied. Things that used to take hours maybe and maybe years of training can now be done in seconds. It was damn impressive but scary at the same time. As you can see, it's much more engaging to follow. But I can see some of you guys commenting, well, why didn't you edit it like this in the original video? And that's a valid point. The reason why I chose to have it in the boring style of not really having the zoom in and outs and keeping the breaths and the pauses is I was going for a different vibe. I was going for a more educational approach. I didn't want to have the editing distract the viewer from the important things that he was saying, which is why I chose to just overlay some B-roll and do some minor cutting. And this is super important because it leads us into our final tip of today, which is to know your audience and decide your theme before you start editing. Now, there are so many transitions. There are so many effects, so many sound effects effects and things that you can use now to spice up your edits. But just throwing a bunch of effects on your clips in your timeline can get messy and can confuse your viewer or be distracting rather than actually service your story. And oftentimes I like to say that you should edit by knowing your audience or you should edit for the audience that you want to have. So coming up with a theme and knowing your audience will help you decide what cuts and spices to use. It'll just make it easier. We can use Volandas here as an example. If you want your video to have a more vintage style, you can use LUTs like him to emulate old films. You can add some film grain, of course, and maybe go all out and have your video only be in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, just to keep things more interesting. Or if you're trying to make an entertaining show for a younger audience, you can use Mr. Beast as an example. Lots of text, lots of captions, lots of sound effects, very bombastic to keep the viewer engaged. So all these tips here are just tools to help you learn and to use only if it fits the story that you're trying to tell. So go out there and stay creative. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Whoop.